What would you do if you had 90 seconds left to live? Maybe you would try to do all the things you always wanted to, say all the things you never could, in an attempt to cram all the worthwhileness of life in the last few seconds. Or maybe you will try to spend it with all your family and friends, saying one final goodbye surrounded by the people that love you the most. Perhaps you might even worry about their financial situation and try to leave them something behind, though in 90 seconds you probably wouldn't be able to. 90 seconds is not a lot of time, but it's all the time you have left and it will feel like ages. The average person could run 500 meters, eat a burger, listen to the first half of Buddy Holly or write 100 words. Or you could try to do all that at the same time. Or maybe you will be like the most of us and start panicking at the thought that it will all be over in a minute. Thinking back on all the days that now feel like seconds, all those wasted years gone like minutes. Wishing you had done something of yourself as proof that it had not all been for nothing, but instead you spend all your time mindlessly watching TikToks. If only you had not been such a prick to everyone around you. Maybe a cat or a dog would have been nice, just like you always wanted as a kitten. Oh, if only you had worked a little harder to achieve your goals. So you can say at the end, well, I tried, at least. If only you had gone out more, visited more places, met more people, all while looking at the clock counting down the last seconds of your life. 16, 15, 14, 13. Well, this got a tad depressing. Let us, um, think some happy thoughts. Flowers in spring. A nice sunny beach. Time with your significant other. Nuclear explosion. On the 16th of July 1945, the first successful atom bomb detonation takes place in New Mexico. This has been the long-awaited product of Project Manhattan, a research and development operation headed by the US Army to create nuclear weapons. As soon as mankind discovered nuclear fusion, they sought to weaponize it. August 6th, a nuclear warhead is dropped on Hiroshima and on August 9th, a second is dropped on Nagasaki. Casualties are upwards of 100,000, with the majority being civilians. Another 100,000 are injured. Many die a slow and painful death due to radiation poisoning. Roughly 20 square kilometers of land is burned and destroyed. Buildings, roads, soil and people are vaporized in an instant, burned to cinder. One survivor writes, I do recall that my surrounding turned blindly white, like a million camera flashes going off at once. This is one of the single greatest tragedies in mankind's history. The Hiroshima hospital, which miraculously survived the blast, is flooded by patients. Doctors do their best to help, despite their own injuries. On August 15, Japan announces their surrender. The Japanese emperor describes the bomb as a new and most cruel bomb, the power of which to do damage is indeed incalculable, taking the toll of many innocent life. Should we continue to fight, not only would it result in the ultimate collapse and obliteration of the Japanese nation, but also it would lead to the total extinction of human civilization. 1947, seeing the dangers of the nuclear arms race, a group of scientists begin writing for the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, warning mankind of its very possible self-destruction. Contributors include notable members such as Albert Einstein, J. Robert Oppenheimer, Max Born and many others. Together they devised the notion of the Doomsday Clock, a symbol representing the impending man-made apocalypses. The clock works as a countdown, going down towards midnight, clearly marked extinction. Although not specifically about nuclear war, the clock has most significantly been influenced by events which threaten the use of such weapons. At the beginning of the Cold War, the clock is set at 7 minutes to midnight. In 1947, the USSR develops an atom bomb. Thus, the nuclear arms race between the two world powers begins. The clock is set to 3 minutes to midnight. 1962, in response to US deployment of missiles in Italy and Turkey, the USSR forms an agreement with Cuba to station nuclear weapons on the island nation. The United States, seeing this, blockades Cuba and the Soviet Union and America enter a tense period of negotiations. The US enters DEFCON 2 for the first and only time in her history. This implies immediate readiness for the Air Force to deploy and the next step to nuclear war. This is the closest the world has ever been officially to deploying the missiles. The doctrine of mutually assured destruction, or MAD for short, is developed. The basic idea is that of deterrence. Should any nation use nuclear weapons on another, the other will retaliate with equal or greater force, completely destroying both countries. An eye for an eye, but more in the essence of total and complete annihilation. Ironically, the term was intended as a joke, to highlight the absurdity of the readiness for murder and destruction on unprecedented scale. 1964, in order to get the favor of Mao Zedong, Chairman Nikita Khrushchev provides China with most needed knowledge and assistance to construct nuclear weapons. In 1964, China tests their first successful atom bomb and in 1967, their first hydrogen bomb, making them the fifth member of the nuclear club alongside the USA, the USSR, UK and France. 
1969, United States, the Soviet Union, United Kingdom and pretty much every country signed a treaty on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons or NPT for short. This treaty contains two articles of interest, mainly the first one which states that nuclear weapon technology will not be shared to any non-nuclear weapon state nor will they be assisted or encouraged in their production. The other one states that parties agree to head towards complete disarmament though no specific time frame is given. Today the treaty is accepted by every nation with the notable exceptions being Pakistan, Israel, India and North Korea, which together currently hold about 300 warheads. Despite this minor issue, this is a major step forward for humanity. The clock is moved back with 3 minutes, we are now 10 minutes to midnight. 1974, India performs their first successful nuclear arms test, which was ironically called the Smiling Buddha. This makes India the sixth country to acquire nuclear weapons and the first outside of the NPT. The USA and USSR develop MIRVs, payloads containing several warheads, each capable of targeting an independent target. The idea is to overwhelm any anti-ballistic missile system that could be used as a defense by countries or cities. The MAD doctrine is in full swing. The clock moves to 9 minutes until midnight. On the 26th of September 1983, Stanislav Petrov is on duty in a bunker near Moscow. His responsibility is monitoring the Soviet early warning system, which would notify them if the USA has decided to deploy their nuclear weapons. A rather mundane and boring job, probably as no such thing could ever occur. Certainly he was occupied with any other task he had during his night shift, desperately trying to stay awake. Shortly after midnight, the bunker's computer reported an intercontinental ballistic missile headed straight for the USSR from the USA followed by four more. Now, after recovering from the initial shock of seeing this, Stanislav had one of two options. He could either follow protocol and report this to his superior up the chain of command. Any decision would have to be made quick as the missile would hit its target in less than 30 minutes. There would be no time for negotiations, no time for saying goodbyes, just one last final act of fuck you by responding with a strike of your own, as the Matt Doctrine would suggest. All culminating in one lovely, big happy mushroom and the world is no more. Option 2 for Stanislav was to ignore this warning, hoping, praying that this was all just a mistake. His superiors would not hear of any of this and if USSR is hit, then well, at least the rest of the world can continue existing. And as we are still standing here, option 2 was what Stanislav chose. 30 minutes later, no explosions were heard, no missiles hit. Because actually, there never were any. The system was quite faulty and had reported a false positive. But had somebody else been stationed or had Stanislav been a bit more worrisome, the nukes could have started flying, all because of a bug in a computer. And that really is the absurdity of the situation. Because of how quickly an attack would arrive, one would have no time to calm themselves and respond with a level-headed decision. Fire nukes now in response, think later, but either way, we all die. And if the supposed attack was just a false alarm, well, it wouldn't matter much. The other side would have already launched very real missiles in a very real response. A few years later, a planned safety test was scheduled for the 25th of April 1986. The test had been performed three times prior, however, each time unsuccessfully. On the 25th of April, reactor number 4's power output was gradually reduced. The day shift had scheduled their test for 14 o'clock that day. However, due to another regional power facility going out unexpectedly, the test had to be postponed so that Chernobyl can satisfy the grid's evening demand. By the time the test could be resumed, the day shift had been replaced by the night one, which was not properly prepared for the procedure. The test officially began at 1.23 on the 26th of April. Less than a minute after that, an emergency shutdown procedure was underway as the test had completed. A sudden spike in output was registered and the core overheated. At 1.24, an explosion is heard. It has blown the 1000 ton cover of the reactor straight through the ceiling of the facility. A second explosion follows soon after, throwing bits of the reactor out. Radiation begins spilling out. In essence, the explosion is equivalent to that of a small nuclear bomb, about 30 times less powerful than the one dropped on Nagasaki. Firefighters arrive at the scene to put out the fire. Most of them and many of the Chernobyl night shift will die in excruciating pains in the next few weeks due to radiation exposure. An experience akin to being cooked from the inside out, resulting in organ failure, skin damage and eventually death. More than 24 hours after the accident, people from nearby towns and villages are evacuated. The father of a friend of mine, who at the time lived near Kiev, remembers seeing glowing snow fall from the sky sometime after the incident. A thousand kilometers away in Sweden, the radiation levels from Chernobyl set off alarms. A radioactive cloud begins spreading across Europe and West Asia. Later, in May of the same year, workers begin the construction of a concrete sarcophagus around the reactor. 
The area remains uninhabited to this day as a grim reminder of what could one day be of us if we are not careful with our apocalyptic toys. A disaster not born of malice but out of human error and negligence. 1991, USA and USSR signed the first strategic arms reduction treaty, greatly limiting the missiles on both sides. Later in the same year, the USSR is disbanded. Celebrations are in order as the world believes that the Cold War is over. The USSR is defeated, USA won, democracy will prevail and all nations around the world will sing happy songs hand in hand together. The clock is set to 17 minutes until midnight. The farthest we will ever be from midnight. 1998, Pakistan tests their first nuclear weapon. In the same month, India tests another five nuclear weapons for the first time since 1974. The clock is moved to nine minutes until midnight. 2006, North Korea tests a nuclear weapon. The clock is moved to five minutes until midnight. 2017, every nuclear holding nation and their allies boycott the United Nations proposal on the outright ban of all nuclear weapons. 2018, under Trump's administration, the USA withdraws from the Iran agreement and the INF treaty. The reasons given by Trump are that both Russia and Iran were violating the conditions of their respective treaties. This greatly agitates the other nations. The clock is set to 2 minutes until midnight. 2020. 100 seconds left until midnight. The closest humanity has ever been. Surely it wouldn't get worse. This would serve as a wake-up call to the nations around the world. On the 22nd of February 2022, Russia begins her invasion of Ukraine. And while I will spare you all the details here, which have no doubt are of importance, I want to mention a few key facts. The political climate became again highly tense with all the typical dick-waving. Putin claims that the West is threatening him with nuclear war and hence he threatens them back. The West claims Russia is threatening them with nuclear war. And back and forth they go. Thus the clock is moved with another 10 seconds. And this is where we are now. 90 seconds left on the doomsday clock. Over 15,000 nuclear warheads stockpiled and over 3,000 currently deployed. And while these may seem like some pretty small numbers, we would actually need only about 1 or 2,000 to completely wipe out all of humanity and cause a worldwide nuclear winter. To any sensible person, the MAD doctrine should seem like a completely nonsensical idea. Using weapons for peace sounds like the most paradoxical statement. But it is still a very popular idea. However, thinking about nations seems pretty complex. These disembodied entities floating freely above humanity, demanding obedience from us is too many levels of abstractions to reason about sensibly. Let us consider just humans. Suppose we gave everyone a gun so they can protect the peace of their community. Sounds like a reasonable enough solution to lower crime rates, but oh well, would you look at that. The USA doesn't seem to have a lower crime rate than us here in Europe, despite their much easier access to firearms. And that is what MAD is all about. It is an international Mexican standoff. And as soon as somebody loses their trigger discipline, everyone will die. It is easy to sit and argue in favor of nuclear weapons when they are not pointed at you. But when you are on the other side, the true terror of such a weapon becomes evident. A survivor of the bombings in Hiroshima writes, Japan is the only nation that has experienced a nuclear attack. We must assert with far more urgency that nuclear weapons cannot coexist with mankind. The solution to peace is not a dick waving of who has a bigger stick, because that is merely a calm before the storm. I do believe that humans are the greatest species on the planet. I am not that religious, I do not base my claims on the teachings of Genesis that God created animals to serve man. And many animal species are capable of much that we are today. Thermites can construct complex structures, ants can form colonies spanning continents, and some primates have even been shown to be capable of understanding basic language. No. Our claim to greatness of truly being the kings of the animal world is our unrivaled capability to be violent. No other animal is capable of such destruction, of such cruelty as is man. 7000 years ago we were a species of only 5 million individuals and now, well, we are capable of wiping out all life on earth at the press of a button. Ain't that something special? And that's what our future holds in store for us. We will continue stockpiling nuclear weapons on land, on aircrafts, on submarines until we find the next cool toy to whack each other with because destroying a whole city is just not enough explosive power. Well, this got pretty bleak, eh? Usually in such videos this will be the turning point, where we become more optimistic and answer the question, so what can you do? Well, not much, really, unless you are a leader of a country, in which case I do not know how you found your way here, but I doubt you will listen to the advice of a stranger on the internet. For us normal folk, such grand events are largely out of our control. All we can do is stop worrying and learn to love the atom bomb. All courses of actions are equally pointless and we can only revel in our powerlessness. Perhaps it will all end with a nice joke. A simple mistake, almost like that of a story from a stand-up comedy. Because that is really what it takes, a minor error. And then we can all be assured in our mutual destruction.
Well, ta-ta and farewell.